We're going to be looking at non-Euclidean geometry, and the f there are two types of non-Euclidean geometry. They are elliptical geometry and hyperbolic geometry. We're going to start out with elliptical geometry today. Elliptical geometry is a non-Euclidean geometry again, and it's geometry done on an ellipse or a sphere. It's very helpful, I think, if you think of this as the Earth. This is a drawing of the Earth, and this line is the equator. Now, all lines in elliptical geometry are actually great circles. Great circle has to go from one pole to another pole. So you could go from the North Pole to the South Pole. That would be another line or a great circle on any elliptical geometry. Let's start out by going through the set of postulates for elliptical geometry. Now these are similar to Euclid's five postulates for Euclidean geometry, except there's two differences. We're using great circles as lines, as I already mentioned, and postulate five is going to be different. So postulate one says you can draw a great circle between any two pole points. So if we have two pole points, we can make a great circle, as I will show here, between any two of them. So let's just go like this and like that. And there is a great circle between these two pole points. And to help you see it better, I will make the back line dashed. So you can get the idea there is a line, and between these two pole points, there is exactly one great circle can also extend any segment indefinitely. You can draw a circle with any given point as center in any given radius. All right angles are still equal. And postulate 5 is the other different one. Postulate 5 says through any given point, not on a great not on a given great circle, there pass no great circles parallel to the given great circle. So there are no parallel lines or parallel great circles in elliptical geometry because they will always intersect. In this case, they intersect right there in the back and right here in the front. In Euclidean geometry, there's a theorem that says that if two lines are perpendicular to the same line, then these lines must be parallel. And that's what Euclid's postulate 5 is. But that's not true in elliptical geometry. As you can see here, these two longitudinal lines, this one and this one, are both perpendicular to the equator, but they are not parallel because they cross at the north and south poles. Now these lines, or great circles, never end, but are finite in length. They're finite in length because you can start at a point and go around, and you come back and you're back to that point. You return to your starting point. Another interesting point is the sum of the measures of three angles of a triangle in elliptical geometry are always greater than 180 degrees. Of course, in Euclidean geometry, they're equal to 180 degrees. I'll show you what that means next. Here's an example of a triangle in elliptical geometry. You can see it right in front here. Now this triangle is greater than 180 degrees, and I will show why. Right here, these longitudinal lines intersect the equator. These are all great circles. And they intersect, they have to intersect at 90 degree angles. So this has to be 90 degree, degrees, and this angle must be 90 degrees. Thus, we already have 180 degrees, plus this angle will make this triangle, which is an isosceles triangle, greater than 180 degrees. And that will be true of all triangles in elliptical geometry. As mentioned before, all triangles in elliptical geometry have a sum of their angles of greater than 180 degrees. Now we're going to go on to the other type of non-Euclidean geometry, and that's hyperbolic geometry. A French mathematician named Henri Poincaré came up with this model for hyperbolic geometry, and it's called the Poincaré disk model. So this disk represents all the points in the interior of a circle. Now lines are arcs in the Poincaré disk model. For the elliptical geometry, they're great circles. Now they're 
orthogonal arcs. And we will create one right now for you to see. So there's an example of an orthogonal arc. Orthogonal means they make 90 degree angles. So these arcs all have to make 90 degree angles with the edge of the point care disc. So there really is just one line that can be made between two points. As you'll see here, they always make 90 degree angles with the edges. Now let's look at the five postulates for hyperbolic geometry. Postulate one, you can draw an orthogonal arc between any two points. Now these are going to be almost the same as Euclid's five postulates, except you're going to see orthogonal arc in place of the word line, and postulate five will still be different. Postulate two says you can draw any segment indefinitely. Postulate three, you can draw a circle with any given point as center and any given radius. Postulate four, all right angles are equal. And postulate five is the, is the different one. It says through any given point not on a given orthogonal arc, there pass more than one orthogonal arcs parallel to, to the given orthogonal arc. So in hyperbolic or in elliptical geometry, we had no arcs parallel. Now we can have more than one. So as you can see in this model, line L and line M, which are arcs, are both perpendicular to line N, and they are parallel because they never cross. You can also see here, through point F, we have four lines, all intersecting at point F, which are all parallel to the fifth line, L, over here or the fifth line N, or the fifth line X, right here. Next, let's look at triangles in hyperbolic geometry. You can see triangle HIJ here. If you remember in, hyper in elliptical geometry, some of the angles were greater than 180 degrees. In hyperbolic geometry, they are the opposite. They are less than 180 degrees. And the reason for this is because um, the way they connect, they all connect in small angles because they must form 90 degrees on the 90 degree angles on the edges all these angles on the inside are going to connect and be concave so we'll, it will result in three small angles that will never sum to 180 degrees also in this point care disc model uh, because we're looking at the interior of a circle objects appear to get smaller the further they are from the center of the disc so I found a little drawing on Wikipedia for the point point care disc model. And here's a hyperbolic man that takes a walk. As you can see in the center he's really big but as he goes closer and closer to the edge he gets smaller. So the distance gets smaller the further you are away from the center. Okay well that's it for elliptical and hyperbolic geometry. I hope you found this informative and interesting and uh, enjoyed these videos. Thank you.